Two ex-Vanderbilt football players have been convicted of raping a former student. Brandon Vandenberg and Corey Beatty were found guilty of aggravated rape and aggravated sexual battery. A jury rejected claims that they were too drunk to know what they were doing. The men will face decades in prison when they are sentenced March 6th. That, that, at the end of the day, quality does win out. But let's see what the rest of the mail says. It says, my own objection in comics is one out of respect. Whether it's respect to the customers, colleagues, or the characters you're writing, if anything, char creators seem to be rewarded by disrespecting characters, like writing off Golden Age heroes as toxic white men, or the vandalism that Tom King does. The big thing that they've been doing is recontextualizing who Frank Castle is. He's no longer motivated by the death of, his, death of his wife and children, he's actually been a serial killer his entire life, according to Jason Aaron. And he was a terrible husband. When he came back from the war, his wife was scared of him and all these things. He was never a good dad. He was never a loving husband. None of that stuff. He was just completely affected. And he was just going to be a killer from the very beginning. And as they mentioned in the article, Maria ends up being the agent of Punisher's destruction. The death of Maria and their children has been Frank Castle's drive for his entire tenure as the Punisher seeking to avenge himself on the injustices of the cruel world that indiscriminately takes away the good in life. Maria's speech in this issue stands as a stark and direct repudiation of everything the Punisher has taken her death to stand for. I'm here to remind you of the truth, Maria tells him. You've already lost your family before those shots were ever fired. With this simple indictment, Maria robs Frank of the entire world that he's clung to for meaning in his life and all the wars that he embraced at the cost of forsaking his family. Me personally, I'm not going to blame uh, a non-fictional character in Maria for doing that. That was clearly what Jason Aaron wanted to do. The Punisher was never good. He was never worth supporting. He was never anyone that could be even be a hero. He was always a piece of crap, and that's who the character is. To make it about woke, do you not see a correlation between the two? Sort of, but woke equals sloppy. We like the fit about people saying that the book is pro-violence propaganda. This is the fourth issue, meaning he and Kwanzaa had plenty of time to edit this script before it went to print. So how does this book open? With ICE agents showing up at some Mexican's house. I'm not kidding, look at the screen. Yes, one of the Antifa wannabes pops up and attacks the ICE agents. Look at them. They're not threatening anybody. They don't have their weapons drawn. They're not trying to pull anybody out the house. One dude just pops a thumb over his shoulder like, let's go. That's it. For that, the Antifa wannabe literally blasts them off the porch. Sort of, but woke equals sloppy. Duke, I started like, picking up this belief system, but at the time, I didn't realize it was a belief system. I went down to a conference um, where, with, with other representatives from different colleges, where I learned for the first time one of the social justice redefinitions. That's where I learned racism equals prejudice plus power. And I was in it for about 20 years. I took it, when I left college, I took it with me into uh, my career. I worked in entertainment and I had friends my age who had picked it up in college and took it into their careers in media. Um, social so she goes in and there's a robbery and she stops it because she's a superhero. Uh, and then <laughs> in some of the best writing like ever, the white Karen cashier accuses her of stealing. Um, yikes, be better. Sort of, but woke equals sloppy. So every time, every time she uses her powers, racist white people accuse her of committing a crime or attempting assault, and then they have to move. Sort of, but woke equals sloppy. Guess who it was? It's the police. Oh no, there's going to be trouble. Who could it have been? I wonder if it was Richie Cunningham, <laughs> Ralph Melf, and Patsy. So in the middle of a Black Lives Matter-esque peaceful protest, three preppy white guys threw two bricks and oh my gosh! He stares at her like a complete psycho. Then he holds up finger guns and he goes, pow. And then he throws 
the lit Molotov cocktail that he had in his left hand. Thing that I took it into my work. I was a producer on a late night comedy show called Totally Biased, which featured one of my comedy clients and several of the writers were clients of mine. And one of the other executive producers was Chris Rock, who was not woke, but I was woke. My client, the host of the show, was woke, is woke. Several of the writers, most of the writers were woke. So you were woke, you edited Wikipedia, and you edited it, the lens by which you edited it was wokeness. Absolutely. I also spent a lot of time on the Christopher Columbus page. I don't know why. Um, I was editing, I added a whole section about how he was a racist, went and found things I could to support that and journal entries of his. And, and you're not a historian. No. I think I also spent time editing the definition of rape. Like, here's the thing. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver, John Malin, the other people who are out doing your live streams and, and jerking off to get attention. Look, you should stop calling it woke and start calling it sloppy. Because at the end of the day, that's what a lot of this is. A lot of woke or non-woke or anti-SGW or whatever the fuck it is, it's sloppy. On June 22nd of 2013, I was a happy, hardworking Vanderbilt student looking forward to my future. I was 21 years old. I've seen with my own eyes what I was when Mr. Beatty was done with me. A piece of trash, face down in a hallway covered in his urine and palm prints. There were five acts of sexual assault and rape committed by him and him alone, and there were seven acts of violence he was found guilty of committing against me. But sexual assault was not where the attack ended. Mr. Beatty continued to abuse and degrade me, urinating on my face while uttering horrific racial hate speech that suggested I deserved what he was doing to me because of the color of my skin. He didn't even know who I was.